So, good evening everyone. This is just kind of an impromptu test. For the first time in many ages, we have clear skies tonight. So I thought I'd uh, come out and uh, do some testing on some new YouTube streaming hardware uh, called Stream Deck. And uh, also maybe just uh, send out a few images while we're here. So without any further delay, uh, right now we're looking at basically the Horsehead Nebula. This is NGC 434, and I'll get rid of that background. Uh, you can see here the beginnings of the Horsehead Nebula. The stars have a greenish tinge to them because I'm using the Ellen Hans filter tonight. And uh, that causes that sort of green. Also, I'm testing out the 8 inch Rasa uh, telescope, which is a dedicated imaging telescope. If you watched my previous video, you knew you know what happened to my uh, 14 inch. Uh, it is now in sunny California without me uh, being repaired. At least I hope so. Uh, so uh, it was an unfortunate incident. The corrector plate got cracked uh, when I opened, did a really dumb, dumb thing, opened the roof of the observatory, it was kind of in a hurry, didn't lower the scope. Long story short, uh, the telescope corrector plate got badly cracked and has to be replaced. It has gone off to Celestron, and uh, hopefully I'll have some word on the likely very expensive repair. Uh, I know the shipping alone was over $200 one way. Anyhow, on the bright side, we do have the 8-inch Rasa, which was actually designed to be more of a a go take with me telescope to dark sites but uh, it's doing a great job standing in so yeah we have the horsehead nebula here which you can start to see again the seeing tonight is not the best but uh, it gives you some idea we have the flame nebula here uh, this is a nebula that's not far away from Orion uh, as a matter of fact I can pull it up here and if you look, uh, it's right here. The big bright star you see in the center is called Alnatak, which is a uh, bit of an imaging nightmare uh, because it is so bright. It has a tendency to blow it quickly. And uh, if you're, in fact, using a fast telescope like an F2 Rasa, uh, the problem is even more pronounced. Uh, you could do short exposures and then compass it, and it's similar to what you do so that you don't blow out the core, core of Orion. Uh, tonight I'm just doing some testing here and thought I'd uh, do a little bit of a live broadcast uh, and uh, let everyone see uh, something other than clouds in the night sky for a change. So that's, that's one target we're taking a look at tonight. And uh, we're going to slew over to something else now. And let's take a look and see what looks interesting. I think we may still be able to catch some of Orion. It's going over toward the southwest right now. Uh, yeah, it's uh, fairly high up in the sky. You can see how close it is to other nebula. We have Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, over here. Uh, Bellatrix, Aldebaran, or Aldebaran. Uh, the Pleiades moving very far into the west now. So, a little harder to see that. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at M42. 
we'll go over here, change that. For some reason or other, my system is running really, really slow tonight. I have a feeling it's my nephew and my wife watching YouTube inside uh, because this system is being broadcast to the computer in my control room via the internet. And I think that could be a part of the problem. However, let's have a look here and have a click on M42. Do the go to. And yeah, you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but there's definitely a delay going on between my action on the computer and a response from the uh, system itself. So let's do the go to and see what happens here. It was actually not too bad for a few minutes. Now it's slowing down again, so they're probably up and running uh, YouTube or Amazon Prime TV or something like that. Uh, and we're not going at all. Uh, let's, oops. Yeah, there we go. Uh, as you can see, it isn't far away from the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula, so did a quick slew. It will, of course, come out quite skewed with the stars. Oh, it did center it. Uh, let's see if we can get a bit of a better look at that. There we go. So that's the Orion Nebula. Uh, you can sort of, if we zoom in here, start to see... Get rid of that. The trapezium, uh, which is this group of stars, very hot young stars in the center, and the gas cloud, the nebulosity around it, which actually extends out quite a bit from the nebula itself. There is a way to image this nebula where you would be able to see those stars uh, better by doing very short exposures and kind of composite, compositing them to compositing. I can't speak today. Compositing them together. Uh, tonight we're just doing some viewing, so I'm not going to get into doing that kind of thing for imaging. And uh, again, just to remind you, green stars are not really green. It's the uh, filter that I have on there, which is a narrow band filter the all enhanced by Optalone, which is really great but uh, again it uh, it does help with the imaging and uh, bringing out that nebulosity this target is really kind of a broadband target to some degree uh, so you can get away without filters if you want uh, you can see some of the different colors. I have some really great images of, of this particular nebula. And you can actually, in a dark sky site, uh, even with a decent pair of binoculars, really see this. Uh, although it won't look quite like this. It'll look more grayish, uh, like a cloud, grayish cloud. But uh, definitely it is viewable in the night sky. So we'll just look at a couple more objects uh, while I do my practice here with my new uh, stream deck and I'm actually going to get rid of me so you can see the whole screen better. So let's see if it actually works. So I have allegedly shut off the camera Audio should still be working, I hope. You'll see me disappear. And uh, let's take a look at... Uh, M45 is pretty far out now. And anything else of grand interest over here tonight? If I had known I was going to actually do a live broadcast, I, I would have come up with a, a list. My apologies. 
So we do have a galaxy over here, but it's way too low. My neighbor's house comes up around here somewhere, so that isn't going to work out too well. Um, what do we got over here on the east side? Uh, not too, too much. Not sure where the jellyfish is right now, which is kind of a nice nebula to look at. Uh, let's see if we can find that one. Let's do a search. Again, system is running really slow. It's kind of frustrating. Actually, let's have a look. Uh, we might be able to see a galaxy here. Let me have a look and see where it is. Uh, something different. We're going to look at M82. And we're going to go to, oops, tonight at 11.22. Yeah, this software is kind of weird. Sometimes it does that. Uh, M82 is fairly high up, but let's go to options. And the current time. So let's look at the current time, which is 929. Uh, that's 920. Yeah, so M82 will be kind of in the area. Uh, so let's have a look at M82. M82 is known as Bode's Nebula or the exploding galaxy it does have you can see the picture here whoops which is gone it looks like it's exploding so that would definitely uh, let you understand why they call it the exploding galaxy it's quite a slew around yeah it's uh fairly high up in the east right now so hopefully above my neighbor's trees so we'll see if we can get a, uh, a view of it here and it's going to go out and do its thing which basically it means it's just tracking uh, I'm using the ASI Air software. Uh, I, I find it works really well for me, uh, except tonight, of course. Usually it is much, much faster than this to, to go, but again, I'm, I think I'm getting some crowding on my bandwidth here, and uh, that's causing it to slow down. So hopefully that will... Uh, not be a problem on another night so right now it's acquired it says the target centered and yeah so we do have a galaxy so we'll uh this is just you can see here is the galaxy itself it's very well centered i'll zoom it a little bit oops there you go not the best of images for just a but for a very quick five second display it's not too bad so let's uh, let's take that up to 60 seconds and see what we get out of it we do have the temperature on the camera quite low as I said the seeing here is passable tonight but not the best I mean I'm in a Bortle 8 zone uh, between light pollution and just the weather 
over the last uh, few months, really. It, it's just been so bad. Uh, there's rarely any opportunity for any length of time to get down, and I'm sure a lot of the other astronomers and uh, hobbyists and YouTubers and everybody else are, would tell you the same thing. Uh, it's just near to impossible uh, to get a decent run of nights in a row for imaging objects. There's actually another galaxy down here as well. And I'll show you that while that's imaging. So if you look at M82, M81 and M82 are rather close together. So, again, uh, these are galaxies that, I mean, you can see the magnitude here, which is magnitude 7.79. Uh, it's azimuth and all that information is there, declination, and uh, you're looking at galaxies that are between 11 and 12 million light years away. So let's see if we got any better imaging here. Yeah, so after 60 seconds, you can see it got better. Let's bring down the histogram a bit. Darken it up a bit. Get rid of that. So we'll zoom into it a bit. So you can start to see the galaxy now. Again, if I were imaging this galaxy, I would be taking many, many shots of it and stacking those shots. Uh, you can see sort of the, the big red area in here. Uh, to some degree, so again, you can sort of see a little bit of the exploding areas, which are just extrusions of gas. Uh, not in any great detail in this image, obviously, it's just not enough. And M81 over here, uh, in there, which is a spiral galaxy. Again, the finished product of these galaxies would look very different than this. This is a wide field image. The telescope and the camera I'm using are very wide field dedicated. The ASI 2600 has a very uh, wide chip on it. and uh, But it looks generally not too bad. I'm not awfully unpleased with that particular image for a one shot. Uh, but just for just for fun uh, let's take a two minute image and then we'll move on to something else and then I think I'm probably going to wrap it up because it's already 9.35 since the time change and we're moving into spring it gets dark very late now uh, sunset is not till like 7.30 plus and that's getting longer uh, each day so time to image throughout the night is very, very limited. Oops. I'm just going to pop myself back up here again on camera for a minute. We got about 61 seconds left on this particular image. And then we'll find one more for the night. And hopefully we'll be able to get together a lot more often over the summer months with live broadcast. It's been very kind of depressing and frustrating that uh, we, we haven't been able to get out at all very much. Even with the observatories made no difference because it's cloudy, raining, snowing. Uh, or the seeing is just atrocious, or you've got a full moon. So just so many factors, and uh, I just heard on the weather forecast actually uh, yesterday that uh, we are supposed to get a very wet April with a lot of showers. 
I guess as they say, April showers bring May flowers, right? Uh, not so great if you happen to be into astronomy. Well, we got about two seconds, so let's see what we get here. With the two minute image, it's just uh, doing its thing now. So we're going to bring the histogram over a little more. So you can see, the longer the exposure, you do get more detail. Uh, definitely that's an improvement, as you can see. Uh, a lot more data in the image. Uh, the noise is cut down considerably because it's a really good camera. Uh, got some good round stars there, so we're tracking nicely, which was a problem earlier in the night for me. I had to reset everything. Uh, you're starting to get some decent detail out of the galaxy here. And if we kind of zip down to M81, you can start to see some of the spiral arms here. You can certainly see the bright core of the galaxy in the center. And again, the longer the exposure, the more images you stack, the more detail you're going to bring out in your end image. Uh, again, there are a lot of people who do it through PixInsight. There is other software out there as well. And I've, I've talked about some of those other softwares. For post-processing, PixInsight is really good. I use a combination of PixInsight and Photoshop, to be honest. Uh, there are some things PixInsight does really fantastic, and I'm still learning it. It's a very deep software to learn, uh, if you want to. Uh, there are some shortcuts and ways around doing things uh, that make it easier, but it certainly can be difficult to get around if you don't know it that well. Uh, there are some really great courses out there in PixInsight. Uh, actually, Sean Nielsen, Nielsen, who is another, who is a big time YouTuber in astronomy, uh, he offers some tutorials. Uh, you can also join Masters of PixInsight if you ever watch Astro World TV, and I recommend you do. They're really great guys. Uh, have a look at there, and they're they give a lot of good hints and help on uh, learning astrophotography as well. So that's a 120 second image uh, of a couple of galaxies. Unfortunately, big galaxies like Andromeda are not right now within my view. Uh, they're hiding behind my neighbor's house, uh, some of them. Uh, but galaxy season is coming, and there's going to be a lot more galaxies to see, like the spy, the uh, spindle, and uh, whirlpool, and some of the others. I don't think I can get. So that's not going to be of any help. So let's find one more object uh, that might be interesting to have a look at. And uh, let's see. There are some dark nebula here. Dark nebula with the filter that I have on uh, would not work very well. NGC 2264, uh, again, not the best for the filter I have on. Uh, well, you know what? Let us have a look at, I think it's probably still in view, M45, the Pleiades.
you can see how slow it is here it's really crazy uh, definitely gonna have to test it again to make sure that my theory that it's my wife and nephew using the internet that's slowing things down so much and not a problem with the computer itself so we're uh, slewing on over to the Pleiades and that'll be the last image for tonight sadly I do have to work tomorrow and the Pleiades is quite far over in the west right now but uh, hopefully we'll get uh, a look at it. Uh, Pleiades, also known as M45, or the Seven Sisters, uh, is a lot of very young, hot, bright stars uh, with a lot of nebulosity around them. And that nebulosity stretches out actually quite a way uh, if you were to do some really uh, long exposure imaging on it and uh, stack that all together. There's some really amazing shots of the Pleiades out there that uh, people have taken. Some great images. We will not have a great image. But, oops. Oh no, okay. Thought I had lost people here for a minute. So, uh, even though there's no one online right now, I hope you will watch this video later. I would be really grateful if you'd subscribe to the channel that would be extremely helpful and uh, for me to keep doing outreach of this kind and be a little more organized uh, next time like I say this was kind of an impromptu thing just to get on test the live broadcasting again test the uh, stream deck which is a hardware device again for doing switching through OBS and some other software uh, to make it easier for doing uh, the broadcasts. So we've got about 89 seconds here on uh, that one. And we'll see what we get out of it with a two minute, imi two minute image. You can see the Pleiades. This gives you a little bit of idea what it looks like as we zoom in here. Uh, you can see that blue nebulosity around it. These are, again, young hot stars. Really just a few million years old, probably. And uh, you can see this with the naked eye in, in relatively light polluted skies, actually. I find in my skies, as they're building more and more in my area, that it's getting very hard to see. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't see it. If you look, you might see some of the stars. Unfortunately, light pollution is, is becoming a real issue here where I live. Uh, when I first moved here, it was a factor, but not as big a factor. And now it's a huge factor uh, however there are some filters and uh, things that help it along are my images anywhere near the kind of images you would get from a dark sky site absolutely not all right looks like it's going to uh, send it to the system yeah let's see what we got here after two minutes okay so yeah you're not going to see a lot of the nebulosity first of all because we have a, a filter on here that's kind of greenish anyway uh, I don't think it would make a huge difference you can sort of see some of the nebulosity a little bit around it in here of course, you wouldn't see that. You we would see that a lot more if this were a completed stacked image and process. Uh, so, you know, it, it is very nice to look at. Certainly, with the visual, looking at it from a visual point of view, it's it's great uh, through a telescope. Uh, again, you're not going to see bright blue nebulosity through a telescope. Uh, you'll see the stars may have a bluish tinge to them. Uh, 
or a brighter bluish tinge to them. But other than that, uh, really, you're going to see maybe some of the gaseous nebulosity around it. But again, it's going to appear kind of grayish for the most part, even maybe a grayish blue. So, uh, I think we'll wrap it up for the night. As I say, it is pushing towards 10 o'clock, and uh, sadly, i got to work in the morning. But it was great to be able to get out, get back on. I'm going to do one or two quick tests before I shut this all down, and uh, hopefully we'll get some clear nights in the uh, near future to do this all again and uh, have a good list if you uh, have any suggestions uh, for objects you'd like me to see or like to see sorry uh, you can always uh, leave a message on the YouTube and like I say if you can subscribe to the channel I'd be really appreciative thank you everyone have a great night and we'll see you again soon